Christopher Springs is the gallery's curator, and he gave CNBC a private tour. Tell us a little bit about how you choose the pieces to exhibit. Well, when the galleries opened back in 2001, we were faced with a problem, a nice problem in a sense, in how do we introduce our public to the arts of Africa? So you'll see around us pieces of contemporary art from Africa, perhaps not the kind of objects that people are expecting to see when they come to an Africa gallery. Uh, and it's very important, I think, for people to perhaps think a little bit outside the box when they're thinking about Africa and when they're thinking about African art, because people have very fixed ideas about both, and in some ways these contemporary artists can maybe shift those ideas a bit. You need to give an idea of the diversity of the whole continent of Africa, and in fact Africa is a kind of global phenomenon. So with these four artists' work, we try to get to grips with those particular ideas in people's minds. We understand that there's an increasing interest in contemporary African art, uh, not just from the public, but also from uh, art dealers and people yeah. within the art sphere. Mm -hmm. But what do you want people to take away from this experience? I want people to, as I said, kind of shift their ideas. The media often portrays Africa either as a place of war, famine, AIDS, suffering, or kind of rose-tinted spectacles with elephants across the Serengeti, drumming and dancing, colorful marketplaces, that kind of thing. Those things are a part of Africa, but through these artists' work, you can immediately get a sense of a whole different Africa that actually people just haven't quite understood, I think. And an artist like Ella Natsui, He's inspired by an ancient tradition in Africa. And this is a narrow strip, these wonderful kente cloths woven by the Ashanti of Ghana. But he's used liquor bottle tops and sewn them together into narrow strips to create what is essentially a sculpture, but it's still called man's cloth. There's lots of history in that sculpture. But in the end, and it's, it's about kind of damage to society by people, kind of mass consumerism and so on and so forth. The hints of the slave trade where, where distilleries were set up in the UK and in Europe to brew liquor to exchange for human beings. That's hidden deep in that sculpture. So it's a layered sculpture. But in the end, although it's referring to damage, it's triumphant, it's dynamic. You know? It says Africa is going to be great. If it's not great already, it's going to survive these things. And it's going to be the place of the 21st century. It's going to be the continent of the 21st century. Chris, we're standing here in front of the Tree of Life. This is a piece that you commissioned for the gallery. Tell me a little bit about this piece. In 1975, Mozambique became an independent country after a very bloody civil war. And this was their flag. And you can see on the flag the AK-47, as well as the hoe and the Constitution. So the AK was a means of kind of liberating Mozambique from the colonial power. And what happened at the end of the so-called civil war in 1992, there were still seven million guns in the country, none of them made in Mozambique, none of them made in Africa, a part of this kind of terrible global arms trade. In a sense, what this does is remembers the, the brave people who brought an end to I think what amounted to a kind of addiction to the gun. Because when I was talking with one of the guys who uh, received the, this hardware, he said, this was wonderful, but you know what? The greatest gift to me was being liberated from addiction to these guns. And he said, for the first time, my children came and, and played with me. They weren't afraid of me. My wife came and hugged me. <laughs> His life was transformed. And it's a message that, 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 that Mozambique and those brave people who gave their lives, many of them, to rid the country of this violence can teach the world. It's a story that Africa can teach the world as well.